So, um, so we have this formula, right? So here we go. So we have the vector. This is really important, guys. Really, really important. So we have the vector. Okay. Um, we go ahead and divide it by there. Uh, divide it by its mag. We found the vac magnitude, right? So then we figured out if we multiply that. Um, is four. If we take that as like the scalar, if we divide basically our mag, if we take, if we basically take our mag, our vector and divide it by four, that gives us a vector that has a magnitude of one, correct? Because we know this points on the unit circle. Would you guys agree? So what we did is we did that in every problem. Every single problem we took the vector and we divided it by its magnitude, right? Or multiplied by its scalar, like the reciprocal, whatever. That is what we call the unit vector. And if you guys look up there, the formula for the unit vector. The unit vector is the vector divided by its magnitude. And that's essentially what we just did. So my warm up question was basically asking you guys, what is the unit vector? But you didn't know what the unit vector was, so therefore I just relabeled it in a different way. But this is something that we are going to practice and that you guys need to know how to do, which is find the unit vector. Now the important thing is, when you find the unit vector, the only difference is, guys, the magnitude is now 1. We know that. But did the direction of the vector change? No, right? So the angle doesn't change of the vector. The only thing that changes is the magnitude. All right, so let's go and investigate, though, this a little bit more, because this is important. This square root of 1 comma 3, because we recognize this as a point on the unit circle. Right? Now, does anybody remember how else did we how else did we label points on the unit circle? How else did we clear, um, classify points on the unit circle based on? Sorry, I should probably clarify this a little bit more. Um, based on their points, like for instance, here's the angle. Based on this angle theta. Now, some of you might already know the angle theta for this. Don't say it out loud. But let's just think about this. What if we didn't know what this angle theta is? How else could we represent these coordinate points based on that angle theta? Yes? Yeah, but yes, but, um, but what in terms of pi? Like, what would you say? Like, 2 pi over 3, comma 4 pi over 3? Like, what do you mean? What would you, or what would you do? Like, for instance, this is basically right now written as x and y's. How else do we learn to write coordinate points? This is really actually, we did this in a transition from chapter 4 to chapter 5. And to give you the answer, which might not come as obvious to you guys, but cosine of theta, sine of theta. Right? Now, if we know this angle, which we do, which is what? In degrees is 60 degrees. So couldn't we also write this point as cosine of 60 degrees, comma sine of 60 degrees? Because what's the cosine of 60 degrees? 1 half. What's the sine of 60 degrees? Square root of 3 over 2, right? So for any point that's on the unit circle, you can represent that as cosine of theta, sine of theta, whatever theta is. Now, this one was nice because we knew theta was 60 degrees, or pi over 3. But we're going to deal with degrees for today. But again, guys, this is, we're not talking about the point. We're talking about a vector. So the vector, if you remember, Brian, since you weren't here, you want to make sure you're looking at this with your hood off, is you're going to have a point, initial point here, a terminal point here. And that's your direction. Now again, since this terminal point lies on the unit circle, we know the magnitude is 1. right? So there's your magnitude, 1. Um, but this vector, 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2, couldn't we also just relabel this as cosine of 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees? Like, is this wrong? No, it's the same thing, right? It's just describing the vector in terms of its angle, correct? And therefore, if we have any angle, we could say, well, then any angle is going to be cosine of theta, sine of theta. Now, this represents any point that's on the unit circle. This represents any point that's on the unit circle when it has a magnitude. Um, sorry. This represents any point that's on the unit circle. Well, if it's on the unit circle, it has a magnitude of 1. What if I wanted a vector that had a magnitude of 5? What would I need to do? What scalar would I want to do with that? Yeah? Just multiply by 5. What if I want that vector to have a magnitude of 55? Multiply by 55. So what you guys can see is that vector, the definition of a vector in terms of its magnitude and direction is written on your board as far as your notes. And that's where that comes from. That's the understanding. 
all of our vectors can be written also in this form. Now, sometimes this form is handy. Sometimes it's not as handy. Like a lot of times, like here, just using component form is good. Like I don't need to write it in terms of its angles. You could, but in this form, like just using the angle is fine. Um, now this one, it's just easy to understand because we understand the angles. But like in our next example, as you guys can see, we don't understand what the angle is here. Like this one gets a little bit more confusing. Okay, so we'll address this one actually. Um, Let's actually look at that one. So let me move that over. Let's look at what this angle would be. So here's your vector, right? Here it is in component. Here's the magnitude. We divide it by magnitude. Done. Now, do we know what the angle is of, those, of this vector? No. no, like this is not that easy. Like, guess what? This is a point on the unit circle. The vector got shrunk, so it only has a magnitude of one. It's on the unit circle. The problem is we have no idea what the angle is, right? So um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out the angle. Well, that problem was easy because we recognize the point on the inner circle. We recognize 60 degrees. But this one, how do we figure out what this angle is? Well, you could create a triangle and say negative 5, 2, right? And then to figure out what that angle would be, what do we need to do? Do tangent. Tangent of, um, so we say tangent of theta equals um, opposite over adjacent. And then theta equals, if anybody's doing their math, 22, I think it's 22 degrees. So could I now rewrite this angle as, um, could I now rewrite this vector in terms of its angle and magnitude? Do we know what the angle is of the vector? Yes. yes, but be careful. Is this really 22 degrees? Well, that angle is 20. Does that make sense for that triangle? That's the angle inside of there. Actually, I really do. Actually, um, that's the angle inside of there. But the angle in standard form is what? Which is 158. So that's 22 degrees. But the angle is actually 158. So. To write the angle in terms of its vector, you do cosine of 158 degrees times sine of 158 degrees. However, guys, what's the magnitude of that? Where, is this, where does this point lie? On the unit circle. What if we want to rewrite the original vector? The original vector has a magnitude of 29. So what should I multiply this by? Square root of 29. This is the same as that. If you multiply the square root of 29 times the cosine of 158, guess what you're going to get? Negative 5. If you do square root of 29 times the sine of 158, guess what you're going to get? 2. Same thing. It's just describing the vector using different pieces of information. This is describing a vector in components, which is very easy to graph. We like that, right? That, this is much easier to graph than that. However, this is just another way to understand the vector, which will be important when we are doing word problems, which we're going to be doing later in this class. All right. Now, I also want to 